Hi guys, so good to see you all. I hope you are all really, really well. So today we're coming on to seminar two after seminar one, which was calculating a calorie starting point. And today we're gonna work, move on to working out your macronutrient amounts, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to go through the full lecture uh, and then I'm going to pick someone out and we're going to go through a real life example of how to do this entire process from start to finish. Okay, so all I'll be doing is picking someone at random uh, who has their BMR number and has calculated their calorie starting point based on yesterday's seminar and we will go through the, the rest from there. Okay. So, okay, so we're going to discuss macronutrients to start with, okay? So the big, big thing that we need to remember is that if we are in a calorie deficit, we will lose body fat. That's what you hear people discussing all the time, okay? If we are in a calorie surplus, then we would tend to gain muscle or fat depending on the the training outcome of, of how we're working, okay? So the food that makes up these calories, however, and makes up our energy intake that which, which we can channel or plan dependent on whether we're looking to be in a calorie surplus or calorie deficit dependent on our goals, comes from three main macronutrient sources, which those that you have worked with me a long time will know a fair bit about them. Those of you who haven't, they might be fairly new, but those of you are, who are certainly joining me for the first time, I think there's gonna be a few things that you probably weren't aware of, okay? So you should probably be have been aware of the three names. So we have proteins, we have fats, and we have carbohydrates, okay? So a big, big thing that many people don't know is that protein and fats, are actually essential macronutrients. By essential, I mean that we need to supply the body with them, okay? The body can't produce them themselves. Carbohydrates, believe it or not, are non-essential, okay? So this is why sometimes when, some of you may have mentioned to me uh, that your macronutrients are down, or if a client comes to me and they says, I'm struggling to eat all my calories, Lee, I will always say, make sure you box off your protein and your fats first. And if you're going to be under on any of the macronutrients, make it carbohydrates, okay? Because whilst they have a whole host of purposes that I will come on to, they are in fact non-essential. So that's probably the first truth bomb, bomb, bomb that most of you didn't know, okay? Because we think of carbs are. So we're going to come on to protein next. So what actually is protein? Okay, so again, this leads back into, it's one of those things that everybody talks about. You have protein shakes, you eat protein cookies, you need protein to grow muscle, protein, protein, protein. But, you know, many of us don't actually know what protein is. And some people giving diet plans out don't actually seem to know what protein is based on what I see online. Okay, so... Protein essentially is long chains of amino acids within the body, okay? Now, the body then breaks these amino acids, amino acids down into shorter chain amino acids that we call peptides. Finally, these individual amino acids that are absorbed into the bloodstream are then carried around the body to every single piece of muscle tissue and cell, okay? So in short, because cells pretty make up pretty much you know make up everything um, they are essential for, for life and for us as humans to to exist okay so in terms of when we talk about protein more in regards to bodybuilding and fitness and weight loss 
the big thing that we need to remember is that the protein is the building blocks of muscle okay and also of also all the other main tissues in the body including enzymes which are the most important now the reason they are most important is because enzymes are present in pretty much every single cell of the body they're also the it's enzymes that are responsible for regulating our metabolism and thus that they break down body fat. So many of you won't ever have thought of protein in terms of the body fat, because all we think of body fat is we think about reducing calories. We think about cardio. Okay. So this will be an eye opener for some people. And it will also really kind of ring true why when I'm saying to some of you, you need to get your protein up, you need to get your protein up because you know, we're all the same and we know this. We, we mentioned it yesterday and I'll probably mention it five times a week on various platforms and calls that, you know, we all tend to nail our carbs first um, unless we're the person that I'm going to come on to that's really scared of carbs. And we're left with protein and we're left with fats, wondering how to get them in when they are the most important macronutrients by far, whether it comes to building muscle, breaking down body fat, but most of all, all these regulatory periods within the body and the cells and the enzymes, okay? So I'm not gonna go too much deeper than that. I had to delete loads here because I got a bit too into this when I was creating the lecture, but I'm going to try and keep it as, as layman's terms and as simplified as possible, okay? So macronutrient number two is fats. So what are fats? Well, what they're not is the adipose tissue that's on your body, okay? So this is a massive misconception that we seem to think, and it's very understandable because of the word, that if we eat fat, we'll get fat. And I think even before I knew about nutrition, I literally thought that fats and fat on the body was exactly the same thing. So I ate some fats and then that fat goes there. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a, a crazy thing for, for someone to, um, to, to think, you know, um, but it's completely not. Okay. Adipose tissue and fats in foods are completely different things. The only property that they both share is the way that they can both be metabolized for energy. Okay. In a very similar fashion. Okay. So fatty acids, which is what we were talking about, make up the fat content in the foods that we eat, and they are essential, just like proteins, okay? Just like proteins, they can't be created, so we need to get them from the diet. Now, the three main omega fatty acids that we always talk about are three, six, and nine, and again, without going too much into science on that, you know, we need a healthy balance of all three. And a massive thing that you will notice when your omega threes are right, I personally put about three to 4,000 milligrams extra in a day. That's not a lot, it's only four big tablets. Um, the, because, of they, because they manufacture, they're part of the manufacture of hormones such as estrogen, estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol, they're generally great for for overall well-being okay so your hair your skin your nails you know omega omega-3 six and nine fatty acids will make you feel, you know make you feel good you know if you look at something that i've always noticed um particularly spanish ladies who really look after themselves they eat a lot of fish okay which is packed with omega-3 six and nines um, and you will always see they've always got nice skin they've always got nice hair you know and that's very much down to to a, a high level of omega-3 um mostly in the diet and it's a big thing that many of us miss out because it's it's in chia seeds it's in nut butter um it's predominantly in oily fish okay and not many of us eat oily fish because it's kind of the mackerels and the the salmons and the sardines and the certainly something that i don't eat um so very often it's worth supplementing with it either as an oil um or as a tablet okay so the fats are also specialist cellular signal signalers that's maintain the structure and the function of the cells within the body. So the key component of this is the body's immune system. So again, 
you know, having a good healthy level of fats are going to help with the immune system. They're going to help your body fight disease. And they generally just, you know, keep the body healthy. I remember once working with a nutritionist and whilst he, he didn't tell them, um, when some of his top boxers and clients that were, were on his books that he was prepping meals for, he actually used to pour omega-3 oil into their into their shakes and their drinks and their juices that they were having. Um, and they'd all be like, I feel amazing, you know, I feel absolutely incredible. And he'd be like, yeah, that's the omega-3s that I put in your, in your drink, you know. So they're generally, they're kind of, you know, a feel good supplementation to the diet. So, you know, make sure you get your fats in, we'll come into how much, make sure they're the right sort of fat, um, not trans fatty acids, which I'll come on to in a further lecture, um, and you will generally feel and function better, okay? So the third macronutrient, remember there are four because alcohol is included, but we're not gonna mention that just yet. I don't wanna be depressing anyone whilst we're still on the lockdown. So, Carbohydrates are the devil's food, right? Yeah, bread, never eat bread. Okay, completely wrong, completely misunderstood, completely demonized, shouldn't be. And you know, there is such, I wrote a full article on the understandable but unnecessary fear of carbohydrates, okay? It goes back into what we were saying yesterday about filling the cupboard up and it weighs more. Because when we eat carbohydrates, okay, the pancreas secretes insulin to convert those carbohydrates to glycogen to store for energy. Once that energy that's stored, that energy that's going to make you feel good, it's going to get your brain to work, it's going to make you functional, it's going to make you train hard, it's going to make you recover, it's going to make you feel good. But it's going to make you way more because the cupboard's full, your glycogen stores are full, you know. The day before I step on stage, I might put up anywhere up to, you know, a thousand grams of carbs in, you know, it's, it's a crazy amount that the body can take filling up and you, you know, you weigh a lot more, but you don't look any different. You feel full and you've got insane energy levels. Okay. You can recover, you're functional, they're important and they will most certainly not make you fat, okay? The, that excess glycogen, you, one, you'd have to overeat carbs, and two, you would need to not burn it off for, you know, in the region of 10 plus days for the metabolic pathways to then take place that would then, the, the, that glycogen would then become body fat, okay? So, in short, this is one of the biggest take homes I want you to take home from today's seminar, okay? Carbs won't make you fat, fats won't make you fat, and protein won't make you fat, okay? Stop demonizing food types, stop demonizing gluten, stop demonizing dairy, stop demonizing macronutrients. The only thing that is gonna make you fat is eating too many calories or eating too many cookies okay or other various treats so there have been a thousand and one different scientific studies okay and they have all come back with no relative true data that there's any difference between a low carb high fat diet versus a high carb low fat diet low carb high fat either or you get what i mean um so whether you go zero carb high in fats keto or whether you go high carb, carb loading, carb back loading, carb cycling, whatever you want to call it, and keep your fats lower because it allows you more calories, there really is no difference. It's down to personal choice. And that's been proven time and time and time again. So that would bring us on to the question, well, why are there so many different diets then that so many people use, okay? So, the reason why is because it needs to vary upon your goals and tastes, okay? So predominantly an average client just wants to build muscle and lose fat. You know, toning is the word that's very often mentioned. You can't tone a muscle. Tone is a descriptive word, okay? You can't say, I don't really want to build any muscle. I just want to tone because what you mean is I want to get lean, okay? There's two things a body can do. It can build muscle and it can strip fat. Toning is just a descriptive word that describes an individual. Wow, look how toned he is. 
you know, he didn't actually tone a muscle. There aren't exercises that tone muscle. Um, but that said, you know, we probably receive a hundred messages every week saying, you know, I'm, I just want to lose fat and tone. Okay, impossible. So that's the little myth busted for today. So in regards to goals and tastes, okay, so we could go endlessly on here. Um, let's take a ketogenic diet as an example that is exceptionally high fat, very low protein, which most people don't realize, and zero carb. It's not just a low carb diet, okay? So keto is an amazing diet, and there's people like James Smith who just bash it all the time, and it just shows a complete naivety and a lack of education on on nutrition as an overall basis okay uh, and they're just doing it for likes with lots of swear words on on youtube to, to kind of get people to to buy into them as individuals okay it's very miseducational so keto is actually 70 percent diet it's a great diet i've prepped for two shows on it loved it however if you do not like avocado nuts olive oil, cheese, nut butter, oily fish, olives, full fat cream and such as a basis, then keto is the most impossible diet in the world. You simply cannot do it. Okay. We could then have vegan diets. We could have vegetarian diets. We can have, as we mentioned, high carb, low carb. Overall, we need to find what works for the individual, and that's what I work on from the outset. So we can use these rules, but if you're, if you're a person who struggles to eat their calories, then a high-ish fat diet would be a really good plan. Now, why would that be a really good plan? Well, here's why we see below on the next line. One gram of carbohydrate is four calories, one gram of protein is also four calories. One gram of fat is nine calories. So this is part of the reason why fats are demonized again, okay? It's purely because the caloric, va the, the caloric value of them. So, you know, it's over double. So if you have way too many fats, your calories are going to fly over and you're going to get fat because you're in a calorie surplus, okay? Now, then the fat will be blamed and it's not fat, which is where all the low fat diet plans come from, okay? Again, it's a calorie issue. So in regards to that, if you were an individual who needed to eat 2000 calories, but you were struggling to even get to 1200 for whatever reason, then a high fat diet would be really good for you because for each gram of fat you're gonna eat, from a fairly small, in terms of nutrient density food, you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna get a lot of calories, you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck, you know, put five teaspoons of nut butter into your diet and see what that does, um, or a whole jar, as Nat once say. You know, it's, it's a hell of a lot of calories for not very much. She'll kill me for saying that. Uh, in regards to, um, the other end of the spectrum, so if you are massively struggling to stay within your calories, like you're on 2,500 calories and every day you're eating 3,000 and you're hungry all the time, then a high fat diet would be the worst possible scenario because for those you know, six teaspoons of nut butter, you could have two chicken breasts, a baked potato and a full thing of, full plate thing, full plate of vegetables, you know. So, you know, one's going to fill you up, one's going to be very easy to eat. So again, this comes down to personal choice and monitoring over time, you know, what foods do I like, what works for me, and how can I stay within the calorie balance and guidelines as close as I want to based on foods that I love and foods that work for me as an individual, okay? But that said, irrelevant of those carbs and fats, let's block them out for one minute, we always need to hit our protein levels for all the reasons I mentioned just 10, 15 minutes ago, okay? So again, there's many, many studies and there's a massive typo there. I must apologize. Um, there's many studies that will put protein anywhere between 1.2 and 3.5. It's generally related to a whole host of different 
diet plans, in terms of different goals, sorry, in terms of bodybuilding and fat loss. But overall, for me, the best possible place to start is two grams per kg of body weight. Okay. Carbs, it should say fats. Um, fats, we generally work on one gram of fat per kg of body weight. So let's say, for example, you weighed 80 kilograms. I would start you on 160 grams of protein and I would start you on 80 grams of carbs. Now, then fats, sorry, even messing my own head up now. So in regards to, so we've boxed off our protein, we're having 160 grams, we've boxed off our fats, we're having one gram per kg of body weight, 60 grams. So now we need to decide on the necessary deficit or surplus we want to be in. So if you'd worked out that your calorie starting point was 2,500, well, Generally, I'll work on 300 either way to start with, maybe 500 dependent on the specific client situation, okay? So if your maintenance was 2,500 and you were wanting to build muscle, I would start you on 2,800. If you were wanting to reduce body fat, I would start you on 2,200. Now, look at the numbers above again. What we need to go back and work out, so let's, let's say we're going for fat loss, so we're at 2,300 calories, okay? So we're going with protein, two grams per kg of body fat, and we're gonna times that by, uh, we were 80 kilograms, sorry, so we're gonna times that by two, which is 160 grams of protein. Now we can see above that it's four calories per, gram of protein. So I'm not gonna do this maths in my head, but we would do 160 times four, and that gives us our amount of calories from protein, okay? We would then have 60 gram, sorry, 80 grams of, of fat at one gram per kg of body fat. So this 80 is then gonna be multiplied by nine to get the calories. So that gives us our two calorie numbers, I should have put this in the notes, for how many calories we're getting for fats and how many calories we're getting from proteins, okay? And we know what our calorie starting point is. So then we're kind of like, well, what do we do about carbs, okay? So there's gonna be a balance there. So let me just work it out for argument's sake, okay? So we've got 80 grams of blur times two, so we've got 160 grams of protein. I'm gonna write this down because I'm gonna lose my mind. So we're gonna times that by four calories, which comes to 640 calories from protein, okay? We've done, then got our 80 kilogram man, so he's gonna have 80 grams of fat, and we're gonna times that by nine calories, okay? That gives us 720 calories from fats, see how you get so much more fats there. So we add those two numbers together and that comes to 1,360. We'll go back to our calories, which was 2,300. We'll minus our 1,360 calories that we've got from fats and proteins and that leaves us with 940 calories. That's the balance that we make up from carbs. So you might now be thinking, well, how do I work that out? Well, it's quite simply, so, so we've got 940 calories left. We're just gonna divide it by four because each gram is four calories. And there we go, 235 grams of carbs. So we know that 160 grams of protein, which is, two grams per kg of body fat, 80 grams of fat, which is one gram per kg of body fat, and the remainder of 235 grams of carbs comes to 2,300 calories, which was what we worked out, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I feel like I made that a little bit difficult explaining it. I should have put some more stuff on the screen. But so the starting calories and macros would have been 2,300 calories, which is 235 grams of carbs, 160 grams of protein, and 80 grams of fat. 
okay? So I will pick someone and we'll work that out again with pen and paper to, to make it make sense. But again, I think a big point to pick up on here, which people forget as well, is that remember that cal calories will always be linear to macronutrients, okay? So it's not on my fitness pal because all the settings are slightly out and everything's just a little bit out in life. But generally, if you worked it out mathematically, no matter, no matter what the number, it will always be the same because one gram of carbs will always be four calories, one gram of protein will always be four calories, and one gram of fat will always be nine calories. So as long as we, let's say I gave you those macronutrient amounts of 235 grams of carbs, 160 grams of protein, and 80 grams of fat, because you were an 80 kilogram person, then your calories will always be that 2,300, okay? You can't, you can't change macronutrients and not change calories, and you can't change calories and not, not change macronutrients. They're intrinsically linked always, okay? So final bit of learning on the, on the three, 300 calories surplus or deficit, is just always remember that more is not more, okay? Be patient and trust the process. So like I mentioned yesterday, there's such a tendency to just think bigger calorie deficit equals better, faster results. Why wouldn't it? Well, we explained that yesterday, didn't we, in terms of BMR, metabolism, working the metabolism, not crashing it, and having a healthy metabolic rate, okay? Again, in terms of gaining muscle, more is not more. Give the body what it needs. Three to 400 calories into a surplus. Two grams of protein per kg of body fat will be more than enough to grow muscle. You don't have to start going on a crazy four, five, 6,000 calorie bulking diet unless you're someone with an absolutely ultra fast metabolism. Okay. And most of the people posting online that they're doing that are absolutely juiced up on steroids into the middle of next week. And that's the reason why their body can take six, seven, 8,000 calories, okay? So the final point we're gonna come on to before I put the cameras back on and we'll have a little chat is energy balance cannot be debated or argued. It is not for discussion, not now, not ever okay so there's nothing wrong with your body you're not different the reason you're not losing weight is definitely not because you're not eating enough food it cannot be debated some of you will have heard me say this to you and i'm really honest from the outset there is no other reason if you are gaining weight unless there is something medically wrong with you that you are gaining weight. Other than that, you are consuming too many calories. So start being honest with yourself and start tracking your food more carefully because that's the reason you're not reducing body fat and it cannot be debated, okay? So as I mentioned yesterday, I always like to put a little story into these seminars uh, and this one's called Pass Me the Monster Munch, okay? So I've told this story many times, but a few years ago, when I was about 14 days, I think, out from the uh, British final uh, physique competition, had a really low, I was, on, I was on ultra low calories, trying to get the last bit of body fat off, had a completely weak emotional moment, stopped in the garage, and ate not one, not two, not three, but four grab bag sized packets of roast beef monster munch. Okay. So the initial feeling straight after was that I'd completely fucked everything up, excuse my French. Um, I was going to look an idiot on stage. Everyone was going to be laughing at me. I was going to come last. I'd just, I'd ruined like nine months of prep in one week moment. And in reality, it was just a few hundred calories or maybe about 800. Um, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter, okay? It was only food. And the first thing I did was rang my coach and told him, expecting to be rollocked into the middle of next week. And he just laughed and says, don't worry, I'm just gonna strap you to the squat rack for two hours. 
and that's in reality the the honesty unless you're doing it all the time you know if you fuck up don't worry it's only food you can burn it off okay you'll get another chance tomorrow you know stop thinking as it's natural to that every mistake is kind of final and, and brutal it's you know if even if you had a massive binge and went absolutely crackers and ate 6,000 calories in a couple of hours well it's gonna wipe probably gonna wipe your week out next week because you're gonna have to probably do four or five hundred calorie sessions to get rid of it but that's all you have to do you know and remember why you did it think about it be honest and move forward okay so never dwell on things like that or beat yourself up because it is only food you always get another chance and we can always burn food off so that's the end of today's lecture Tomorrow, we will be talking about measuring your progress and tracking food. So we're going to start talking about MyFitnessPal, how to account properly, taking photos, measuring yourself, strength, how you close fit, everything that you need to do in terms of personal accountability to be able to very, very accurately measure your own progress and results. So... Yeah, if you're staying online, I'll be back in two minutes. In terms of the lecture, that's over for tonight, and I'll see you all soon. Take care.